talking about electricity, which is 650. Okay, so electricity <clears throat> is very important for us. I mean, without electricity, we cannot style their hair. You're not going to have access to blow dryers, wands, curling irons. You're not going to be able to wash their hair in warm water if you don't have electricity typically. Um, because even if you have gas, doesn't mean that the gas is going to not ignite. And without electricity, a lot of the gas units don't even tell it to, um, you know, for the light to come on so that you can heat up the water. So electricity is very important to us. Knowing how to use electricity is also extremely important, okay? <clears throat> so electricity is basically a form of energy, okay? When it is in motion, it exhibits a magnetic and a chemical or a thermal effect. So this is very important. Now, when you have electricity, electricity moves along a conductor. And let's see, Liliana, can you tell me what a conductor is? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, um, Natalie, how about you? What is a conductor? I have no clue. I know, but I don't know. Okay, let's try somebody else. How about Lindsay? It's like a thing that transmits like electricity. Exactly. Yeah. So it's basically, it gives the, the electricity something to go down. It's like a highway. So it gives electricity something to go down. Okay, so conductors, as you will see right here, conductors are typically going to be like a copper, any kind of a metal, aluminum, steel. And with these conductors, um, you're going to find that the most popular is going to be copper. Anytime that you, if you see a, an old extension cord or whatever you guys are throwing away, open it up look at the wires inside, you'll see that typically they're always copper. Okay, that's your most and the most popular conductor that's going to be there. Okay, then we have what we call insulators. Okay, so and guys, everything that I'm talking about today, you guarantee it 100% you will see this on the test. Okay, you will see this on the test, and it will most likely also be on state boards. So I would make sure I know my electricity. <clears throat> so what is an insulator, um, Eric? Say it one more time. What does an insulator do? Say it a little bit louder. No? Um, Vanessa. Okay. It doesn't let it, it protects us. An insulator protects us. So if you look at the insulator side and look at the pictures that's below the insulator, you're also going to see that it's made of plastic, rubber, glass, ceramic, um, cloth, but it is a special type of cloth, and wood. Okay, these help protect us. So look at the cord that's there. It has an extension cord and it has rubber that's a rubber and plastic that's around it. That way we can pick up that cord without getting shocked. So when you have the plug on there, the plug has an insulator around it so that we can grab that plug without getting shocked and die. Okay, so if you see somebody that is being shocked, then you need to be able to grab something that is an insulator something that's made out of a rubber or a wood or something that doesn't conduct electricity to knock them off of that if they didn't get blown halfway across the room in the first place. Because if you don't and you touch them, now you're going to also get shocked. Okay, so <clears throat> if you also look at the insulators, there's type of insulators that's down below here. You can see those type of insulators as well. And then we have another insulator. Let's see if I can find it right here. Mr. Marks, are you supposed to be sharing your screen? Yes, is it not? Can you guys not see it yet? I'm only seeing you. Okay. Let me try that again. And I'll do the share motion. Da -da -do, da -do, da -do. Boom. Now, can you see it? 
perfect. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. So you can see the insulators that's down here. Most of these are ceramic glass or type of pottery. They used to use these a lot. If you have an older home, you'll see some that looks like this one right here that I'm pointing to. Um, some of those may, may still be nailed on the outside of the house as well as on the inside. Or if you go in your basement, you'll see those down there with um, the glass. Marks? Yes. I think you're sh sharing the wrong screen. We're seeing like a list. Like this is like electricity and then, uh, are you showing a picture? I don't know. Yeah, I'm supposed to be, let's see. You've got the front screen, I bet, which is fine that you see that too. But um, I want you to see the pictures. So I'll do this one more time. Pictures? Yeah. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay, so you'll see this conductor here a lot of times in your house. It'll probably be white and it'll probably be glass. If you're in an older home, look in the basements, and you'll probably see them there, especially if your homes were built in the early 1900s. Okay, so that would be something you could see there and see in there. Now, funny stories too that you'll see here. Let me just bring up another. Okay, so also we have insulators that look like this right here. This is a handle for an electric fence. And you can see the fence wire runs here, connects to a piece of metal. The metal goes through this plastic handle. And then on the other side is another piece of metal that hooks into the wire. And then there's a plastic insulator here that the wire runs around and runs around and runs down, as you can see, like it does right here. Now, this is what we use when we're in our horse paddocks and stuff like this to keep our animals um, from getting to the boards and eating them. And because a horse will eat right through a fence wood. They love to chew on wood. And so we'll get them so they stay away from the fences and they don't break out, okay? Well, growing up, I grew up with horses and cows and pigs and I, we grew up on about 300 acres of land. And so my dad was outside and he was in the paddock and my brother didn't know it. And we always got yelled at if we didn't, we didn't plug the fence back in so that the horses don't get out. My brother walks into the barn and he doesn't know my dad's out in the paddock and he sees the electricity is unplugged. So he goes, plug up the fence. Well, my dad has this handle in his hand and just so happens to be at the same time that my brother's plugging it in, he was scratching his stomach with the handle. And of course it just lit him up and boy was he upset. And so also what I used to do to my friends that came over was they always wanted to see the horses. So I'd take them outside to see the horses and as we're getting close to the fence and they want to pet the horses, I said, come on, they're fine. They're fine. They're going to be good. So they're, they're, you know, you get to come up close and you can pet them. And I put my hand on the shoulder of them. And then I would grab the fence. <laughs> that electricity would go straight through me. I'm just a conductor. It doesn't bother me, but it would light them up. And then I'd release the fence and they'd be so mad, but it was so funny. <laughs> so, the fence is not, they're not strong enough to really do anything to you, but they do give you a nice little shock. So it's kind of fun because you could actually just touch the fence and it won't shock you, but it shocks the person you're touching because it uses you as a conductor. And so then when you release that fence, they stop being electrocuted. So that was always fun. Okay, so back to our sheet here. Okay, so we've got what a conductor is. We've got what an insulator. Insulator protects us, conductor gives it ability to transmit electricity. Your conductors that you need to remember, copper is the best, okay? Copper is the most common and it's a very good conductor, but all metals are conductors pretty much. Then you have what we call a complete circuit. A complete circuit is where you're going to have electricity that runs through a system and completes, it goes back to the original source. That is a complete circuit. Okay, so always remember that the path of electrical current from the source and then it goes back to the original source that completes a circuit. Okay, now there's two types there's direct and there's alternator alternating direct is where you have a constant even flow of electricity and it goes in one direction. And it ends. Okay, a good example of this is going to be like your flashlights. Um, cell phones cordless drills, anything that has a battery is gonna be a good source and a good example of a direct current. Whereas alternating current is gonna be interrupted 
and it's flowing first in one direction and then goes back to the opposite direction. So it alternates. And then you have a converter. Converter is going to basically change the direct current to alternating current. Okay, so it converts electricity. Now, fun part. Okay. How do you measure electricity? Okay, when I was in cosmetology school, I tried to come up with the most ridiculous things so I could remember these things. Because we all hear these things. We all hear amp and volt and volt, and we all hear watt. But we have no idea what that means. Most of us don't. We're not electricians, but these are forms to measure electricity. So I had to come up with some things that would keep it in my mind that are dumb, that I always remember and not forget. So I'm like, well, how can I measure volt? What is a volt Electri of electricity? Well, volt measures pressure. So I said, okay, so it measures pressure. How am I gonna remember that? So I just say, a volt is the VP of electricity, okay? So you got volt for v, v for volt, and then you got P for pressure. It's the VP of electricity. It rhymes, I can remember it. It's kind of dumb, and then you remember it. When you think of things that are kind of ridiculous, you tend to remember them more. So if you remember volt is the VP of electricity, you'll remember, oh yeah, volt measures pressure. Because in your questions, it may have, what does volt measure? And then you got to tell me, what does it measure? Does it measure pressure, strength, resistance? Does it measure one in one second? What does it measure? Or it may be the opposite. I may have a question that says, what is, what is measured in pressure? And you'd have to know it was volt. So just remember VP for volt. Then you have amp. This one was hard to come up with, but it kind of clicked and I kind of remembered. So amp is measured in strength. So AS. Well, nothing really stands for AS and I can't remember. So I just said amp is like an ant. Okay, those little ants can carry like 10 times their weight. They're, they're very strong. So ants have strength. So then I remember ant is, amp is like an ant. So amp measures strength. That's how I remember that one. Then you have ohm. Ohm. <clears throat> ohm measures resistance. So I had to think OR. And the only thing I could think of with that is like when you're talking about the people that meditate, most of you guys are resistant to meditation. So you're like, oh, like that meditating sound, the oh, most of you are resistant to meditation. So then you can remember ohm is resistance. And then the last one is my favorite because what? measures electricity in one second. And most people are like, it can measure it in one second? And they're like, what? So if you can remember that, or remember at least three of them, then you can do a process of elimination for the fourth, and you and you should get all those questions right. So remember, VP is electricity, volt is a VP of electricity, amp is like an ant. Everybody's resistant to meditation, so they don't want to say, oh, and then what is like saying what? Because that's measuring electricity in one second. And that's how I remember those. Now you may come up with your own thing that helps you to remember it, but the more ridiculous it is and the more it rhymes, the more chance you have of remembering. And I guarantee you 100%, you will see these on your test. 100%, every one of them. Okay, any questions about measurement of electricity? Okay, let's move on. So then we're gonna move into when electricity is in your house, you have what we call circuit breakers. You also have fuses and you and we also in our salons use electrodes. Now a fuse. Most of you do not know what a fuse is or have never seen a fuse in a home because most of your homes have updated to circuit breakers. Okay, so if you look at the picture here, you can see this glass fuse. This is what I grew up with. So in my house, like you, if you're running too many things in your bedroom, you got a hairdryer going, current iron going, TV's on, radio's on, everything's going at the same time, and all of a sudden the power goes out. 
and it only went out in your room. It's because you flipped a breaker. And what do you do? Simple. Go to the circuit breaker box and flip it back. No big deal. And it comes back on. What that did was this circuit breaker that's here, It too much power was going in, so it told it to cut it off before you guys have more damage to the house. Or you start a fire, or you get overloaded, and the whole system goes haywire. So that circuit breaker that you see here, each one of these is in here. And let's say if it has 20 amps there, and you have a hairdryer that's 18 amps, and now you cut your curling iron on too, guess what? The circuit breaker is going to flip and your electricity is going to go off because it's too many amps. Okay, so you can only put so much on that little plug. Just because you have a plug with electricity, it doesn't mean you can fill it up with stuff. Now, I grew up when our power got kicked off into a certain house or a certain portion of the house. This is what I had to deal with. So what you'd have to do is go down to the to the fuse box. We didn't call it a circuit breaker box. We called it a fuse box and hope that we had some extra fuses. This one, you see it's nice and clear. Well, if you blew a fuse, then it would turn black. It'd be all smoky inside. And then we'd have to unscrew it and then look for another fuse and screw it back in there so electricity would come back on. Most homes um, from the 70s and down pretty much had a fuse box in it. But now they've changed that and most homes have updated to what we call a breaker box. So this is a fuse, this is a circuit breaker. They serve the exact same purpose, they're just a different tool. Down here at the bottom are some other examples of fuses. And you also see these little fuses. You'll find these little fuses in pretty much every plug that you have, like for the Christmas lights, they'll be in there. For your chargers, they'll have a fuse in there. There's a lot of, lot of devices that have these fuses and if they blow, they'll turn black and you just put a new one in there and that'll work again. And you can usually just take a, a screwdriver and just kind of open up that plug and then there'll be a little fuse there. Pop it out, pop a new one in, you're good to go. If you ever have Christmas lights, you'll see they always have a little package they put on there of extra fuses. And so that's what you do. If your Christmas lights goes out, if you can't find a burnt one out, then go ahead and change the fuse and it'll pop right back on again. Now we're gonna move into what we call electrodes. The electrodes are into your far right box. Okay. Anybody that's seen a facial done and they're doing high frequency, which use the Tesla electric electricity, is using these. You see a long slender one, one that has more of a flat rounded surface, one that's shaped kind of like a spoon, and then you have a comb, okay? These are what we call glass electrodes. An electrode is going to transmit electricity from a device to your skin, okay? In this case, and I'll show you, you're going to be, uh, they've taken out all the air from the electrodes and they put in gas in there, neon or violet gas. Um, and these gases will light up when you do the high frequency, like in my spa room, where I do facials, it is very, the lights are very low, so it's very relaxing. I have soft music. It's really a nice room and it, you can't hear outside the room because we're upstairs. So no, you can't hear what's going on in the salon. When you turn this on, it'll glow a really bright purple or a pink or red, depending on the type of gas that's in there. Okay, you have to be very careful with them. Most of you that are going to be coming in person will be able to use these and you'll get a check off for them. You will not get this check off unless you come in person. Okay, because I cannot teach this from at your house. You have to come in to get this check off in person. Also, if you've ever had an EKG or if you've ever had CPR training, you can see this is the CPR mannequin and on there are these pads. And on there, you have the machine and you hook up these pads that you see are electrodes. Again, they deliver an amount of electricity to the body from the machine. And what you would do is you have one electrode that's placed on the upper pectoral and then one that's placed on the lower torso. 
This way, when the electricity is delivered, it comes up here, goes through the heart and back out the other one. So it completes the circuit. Okay, now one of the things I need to check on, because I think this picture was actually wrong. Um, let me just look that up quickly. Yes, okay, so the cat node, as you can see is, and this is correct here. So the cat node that you'll see is going to be a positive side, whereas the A node is gonna be negative. And that's all you really need to know for testing purposes. Just remember your cat is positive, so you can think all cats are positive or not. But let's just think all cats are positive and then the A node is going to be negative. And that's what you need to remember for testing purposes. Okay, then we're going into to the Tesla high frequency, just like I told you before. Um, most of you have heard of the Tesla cars. It's run totally on electricity. They're pretty unique. Um, the one thing you'll learn about a lot of the Tesla cars is it's not something they last probably about 10 to 12 years, and then you have to purchase a whole new car. It's not like you can fix them like we can our cars today. You can put a new engine in it or whatever. It would be much cheaper to buy a new car. Um, basically, it's a giant computer is what you're driving. And with the Tesla, the high frequency is we use these in facials. The Tesla high frequency units, you can see, can either be a violet or a neon color, which is going to be more of a pinkish red. You notice they have a piece of gauze over the skin. This gauze is just used so that it, it can have a, a very smooth uh, movement over the skin but you can do this directly on the skin. But with the gauze, it's just much easier for movement on there. What you use the high frequency in there for is to use in the case of they have acne, it's very good for using acne because this ultraviolet light, light kills the germs that's on the skins and the, and the bacteria. So when you're using it for acne, it will help zap that bacteria and kill the bacteria. Therefore, you'd have the acne would start to go away. So once I had students, when they learned this, I can't tell you, it's like almost every single day, I had to have a high frequency unit because everybody wanted to zap their pimples when they got to school that day. Then you also can use this for stimulation, stimulation of the circulation. So, um, Ali, if I'm gonna stimulate my circulation, what am I doing? What is happening if we stim if we raise the circulation? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> okay, um, help her out. Um, let's go with um, Chloe uh, Sapiatro. Really sure. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Okay, Swanee. I indeed also have no idea. Okay. Um, how about Chloe Schwab? Um, can you repeat the question? It kind of glitched when you asked it. Okay, so if we are using a high frequency unit on a client here in a facial, we are stimulating circulation. If we stimulate the circulation to an area, think of your anatomy and physiology. What are we doing? What is circulation? Uh, bringing blood flow to the skin, I think. Exactly. And if we bring, bring blood flow to the skin, uh, Samantha, what are we doing? What is our blood? It's moving. It's moving, but it's bringing what to us? What is our blood? Oh, oxygen. Oxygen, yes. So by 
doing a high frequency on the skin, not only are we trying to kill acne, we're stimulating the circulation. If we bring more oxygen to the skin, you're gonna have healthier, healthier cell growth, healthier hair growth, more collagen being produced because it stimulates the collagen, which means we're gonna have healthier, younger skin with more elasticity. So when you're using this Tesla high frequency, it can be used for acne, start stimu uh, stimulating circulation. It can also be used for alopecia. So these are all wonderful and it's a wonderful device that I use a lot in my facials. So this is a really good um, thing that you guys can do. Okay, so the continue talking also, when we're talking about UV light, I'm gonna bring this sheet right over here for you guys. Okay, so this is the sheet on electricity. This is posted on Monday, you need, or today, you need to make sure you basically memorize this sheet because everything that you see on this will be on the test. Make sure when you are using the Tesla high frequency, be aware that there are do's and don'ts. Don't put this near metal. If they have a nose piercing, I would highly advise you to avoid that area or have them take it out because it is electricity. And what is metal? Lissandra, what is metal? Come on, I just said it. You guys know this. Who knows? What is metal? It's a conductor. It's a conductor, exactly. Metal is a conductor. So there you go. You're going to shock them. Okay. If they have plates, don't go over it. If they have um, a lot of metal in their braces, I'd be a little weary of it. Stay away from those areas. Okay. If they have a brow piercing, stay away from that area or have them remove it. Okay. Because it's a conductor. If they are pregnant, I wouldn't advise it. Okay. If they suffer from epilepsy and have seizures, I wouldn't advise it. Okay, if they also are their own different uh, medications for high blood pressure, um, pacemakers, uh, implants. And you'll see a lot of implants that are over the heart or near the heart in the chest area. Okay, so avoid using the high frequency machine on those type of clients. Infrared, infrared have longer wavelengths. They penetrate deeper, remember that. They are more visible and they have a heat source. Infrared is used in a lot of color processing. Um, it does have, but you need to make sure that you keep those infrared lights away from your client by like 30 inches. I would advise more than that, to be honest with you, but at least 30 inches. It does produce a lot of heat. You can literally burn your client if you're not careful, if you have the lights too close and you can definitely burn and ruin their hair. Um, and when using these, you need to be careful yourself not to touch those lamps. If you touch those lamps, I mean, it can melt your skin right off pretty fast. Those lamps are hot. Then you have blue light. Blue light is going to be used um, basically with a type of an oily skin, like you would have an oil that you can apply to it. It does not really have heat. It's the least penetrating and it does have some uh, benefits with germicidal, killing bacteria and chemical. And then red light is going to be a combination, can be used with combination skins. And it also, red light penetrates a little bit deep, the deepest, and it does produce, produce heat. Now, ultraviolet, ultraviolet rays make up about 5% of the natural sunlight, okay? We typically get exposed to UVA and UVB. It is very good for you as in if you do it correctly. Okay, a lot of people say, oh, don't get in the sun, you're gonna get skin cancer. That is so not true. Okay, it's like anything else. If you overdo it and you do it incorrectly, yes, it could become detrimental for you. Okay, but every medical journal that I've ever read from peer reviewed, and I'm not talking about .com sites, guys. You've got to lay off these .com sites or Wikipedia and stuff like that. That is not where you get information from. 
okay? Anytime you see a dot-com site, they're typically trying to sell you something. So they're feeding you with false information so they'll get you to buy their products. Stop reading the information from dot-com sites. When you're trying to do reputable information, especially if you're talking about medical, you need to get it from a peer-reviewed journal, medical journal that's been peer-reviewed. Then it's research-based. And then you know you're getting information from a reputable site. Okay, so any peer-reviewed journal that I've ever read says that you need at least 10 to 15 minutes of sun exposure. Okay, so that will help you to increase your vitamin D. Vitamin D is very good for us, and the only way you can really get vitamin D is through UV rays. You cannot replace it with a pill. You do not get, even if you took 30,000 units a day of vitamin D, it will not replace them out in the same vitamin D you get from the sun. Tanning is good for you if you do it safely. Most people get confused and they go out into the sun and they stay out in the sun all day and they think, oh, I'm gonna get more vitamin D and they end up burning their skin. This is where you become into skin damage and increased chances of skin cancer. Okay, but if you tan correctly, actually the UV rays can help you prevent cancer if you're doing it correctly. And if you use sunscreen, most dermatologists and the peer reviewed journals advise you <clears throat> to have 10 to 15 minutes of sun exposure and then apply your sunscreen. In order for sunscreen to be effective, you have to read the directions. And most sunscreens will find, will tell you that you have to reapply reapply, reapply, reapply. <clears throat> so if you're out in the sun, probably every 60 minutes to an hour and a half, you're gonna to have to reapply the sunscreen. So really, if you go on vacation, you're probably gonna need probably three to five bottles of sunscreen. If you're only going through a half a bottle of sunscreen, you might as well have just use none because basically that's basically what you just did. You have to apply a lot of sunscreen in order for it to be actually effective from UV rays. If you're not, that means you're not using it right and you're still gonna have the same detrimental effect to your skin and increased risk of skin cancer. So that's UV rays in a nutshell. Um, you do have to be very, um, and no matter what guys, if you're out in the sun, one thing you're never gonna avoid is aging effects other than trying to take care of your good, good care of your skin, um, sun and UV rays does have aging effects and that's just part of life. And there's nothing to stop that other than trying to use good moisturizers and creams and things that keep our elasticity in the skin. Okay, so are there any questions about electricity? So we're all good with electricity. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to continue sharing my screen with you. I'm going to stop the recording because I don't need it to record the video that I'm going to show you. Okay, guys, and just to make one correction on there, the A node and the cat node, the picture that you saw was actually reversed. The A node is positive. The cat node is going to be negative. So that is the correction that I made to electricity. A node in Milady is said to be positive and the cat node is going to be negative. Okay guys, thanks for um, listening to my lecture on electricity.